Hello and welcome to Emmanuel Church Rio Rico's online worship for June 25th, 2023. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for the opportunity to look into your word, to learn more about what it is to be like Jesus, to be your friend, to be your servants. Lord, we pray that you would bless us, you'd open our eyes as we see the miracles that you have performed and continue to perform. This we pray in your precious and holy name. Amen. We're still going through the gospel according to Luke, and I'm calling today's message, Don't Stop Believing. And yes, I know that's the name of a pop song from some years back, but it's also really what Jesus is illustrating here. When you start believing, keep believing. Don't stop believing. Keep believing. So let's take a look. Now, to set up where we are, uh, Jesus has uh, already driven the demons out of the Gerasene demoniac. And he has now returned home. And when he goes back home, people are looking for him. They're expecting him. They're waiting for him. So let's pick up then uh, in Luke chapter 8, starting in verse 40. Now, when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, who was a synagogue leader, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house, because his only daughter, a girl of about 12, was dying. Now, this synagogue leader is, uh, he was not a rabbi, but he was a leader within the synagogue. He was a pious man. He would be a man who studied the scripture and that people respected. And for him to go to Jesus, to beg him to heal his little girl who is dying, means that he's desperate. He is turning to Jesus as a last resort. Quite honestly, that is how many people begin to seek the Lord. They, they can't find an answer anywhere else. And they turn to him as a last resort. And yet, as a last resort, there is no better option than Jesus because he is the one who hears. He is the one who cares. He is the one who knows. And so Jesus sets out with him to go back to his house. And yet they encounter a problem. Uh, as Like it said there, a crowd was welcoming him. There were people all around him. And there were so many people around him that it was very difficult to even move. Now, I'm skipping a whole story here. And I'll probably go back next week and, and pick it up uh, about the woman with the issue of blood uh, who touched the hem of his garment and was healed. And, and it's something worth looking at. I just didn't want to go into that because it is a, it is a, a different tack than what's happening in the rest of the story here with Jairus. So going on, uh, don't try to limit Jesus. While Jesus was still speaking, and he was talking to those who had uh, surrounded him and talking to the woman who had been healed, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. And you might notice that every time Luke mentions his name here, so far, he's referred to him as a synagogue leader. So this is a obviously an important role for him. This is obviously something that matters. Uh, your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Now, often, this is the way we think. Oh, it's too late. Can't do anything about it. But you see, we're trying to limit Jesus, just as this person was. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, Don't be afraid. Just believe, and she will be healed. Now, it's quite possible that this meant that Jairus believed that she was not dead, but maybe asleep, passed out, maybe even in a coma. So when he, meaning Jesus, arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, and James, 
So only these three uh, disciples, who are often the ones that accompany Jesus on uh, the most important missions. And the child's father and mother, of course, went in. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and mourning for her. Stop wailing, Jesus said. She's not dead, but asleep. Now, you need to understand something about Middle Eastern uh, grief customs. These people were wailing. They were mourning. They were tearing their clothes in mourning. The expressions of grief in an ancient Jewish household when someone died were what we might even think of as extreme. They would, they would rend their garments. They would pull their garments apart. They would, they would wail in grief. Uh, there were even people who were professional mourners who were paid to go in and mourn the loss of someone uh, just to make sure that the, the custom was maintained. And Jesus is telling them, be quiet. She's not dead. She's asleep. Now, Jesus is perhaps aware of something that no one else is. It's quite possible that she is in a deep coma. At this time in history, it would have been very difficult to tell that she was still alive, especially if her respiration grew so shallow it was almost unnoticeable and her heart was barely beating, as can happen in a coma. We have ways of telling today, but in that day there weren't any ways of telling. On the other hand, it is possible that she had died, and yet Jesus knew that he would bring her back. Either one, bringing someone out of a coma or bringing them back from the dead, either one is a pretty strong miracle. Finally, not just alive, healthy. They laughed at him, knowing that she was dead, so they were sure she was dead. But he took her, the girl, by the hand and said, My child, get up. Her spirit returned, and at once she stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat, her parents were astonished, but he ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. Now remember, only Peter, James, and John and the girl's parents are actually there with the girl. So nobody else saw what happened. But Jesus says, feed this child. Because you see, when Jesus heals someone, they're completely healed. She's not getting better. She is well. Jesus has not just eliminated some of the illness. He's healed her. He's brought her back to life, to full life, to active life. I have very little doubt that she would want to go out and play after this. Why? Because she's a little kid. And this is probably the best she's felt in a very long time. When Jesus makes us whole. He makes us absolutely whole. When we pray for healing, we do it because we know only Jesus can fully heal us. Only Jesus can really restore what we are missing. And in this case, he's brought this child back to life. And he has given her back to her parents with a simple admonition to give her something to eat. She needs to, something. And then he tells them, don't tell anybody what happened. We see this often happen. Jesus frequently tells people not to tell anyone else what has happened. Now this is different from what he told the Gerasene demoniac. He told the, the demoniac, tell people what God has done for you. In this case, he tells the parents, don't tell anybody what happened. Why? We don't know exactly. But I think it was not time for his full ministry to be revealed yet. Until it was, he doesn't want people to know. But you see, now we are to tell people what has happened. We are to tell people how Jesus has brought us wholeness, how he has brought us health, how he has brought us life. Even if we weren't clinically dead, like this girl seems to have been, or in a coma, either one. We have seen him heal us 
and heal those we love over and over again. Why? Because he is still the greatest physician of all. That's why we still ask Jesus to bring healing. Not that we ignore the learning, the, uh, the, the wisdom that doctors and nurses have received, but we do not want to ignore the fact that they can only cut out bad things, kill germs. Only Jesus can bring healing, and he brings full and complete healing. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for what we have seen in the lives of this girl and for what you teach us over and over again. We pray that we would rely on you completely and totally and trust you to do what you have said you would do. You are the great physician. And we praise you and bless you. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Go in peace and may God bless you.